Keir Starmer's made a choice. He's made a decision. There is, at this very moment, a humanitarian calamity of biblical proportions unfolding in Gaza. Around one in every 240 Gazans have been killed in the space of one month, including those missing, presumably dead. That's closer to one in every 200 Gazans dead, killed in the space of a month. And this is only the beginning. The Israeli state is bombing schools, hospitals, ambulances. I watched the aftermath a bit earlier of the bombing of one of those convoys, a convoy of ambulances. And what I saw, the bloodied, mangled corpses, those who had survived but suffered grievous injuries, many of them, or some of them, I presume, will not survive. The blood, so much blood, the anguish screams and cries, that will stay with me for the rest of my life, personally. Now, the IDF admitted to bombing this convoy of ambulances in case it was disputed. They claimed Hamas was using them. Now, I'm giving this as context. It's important context. Always have to have this context of what's happening in Gaza every time we do these videos. Let's just listen to a CNN report about this convoy of ambulances. Uh, uh, these ambulances were part of a convoy that was heading south towards the Rafa crossing. The Red Cross had been informed that the convoy was leaving the hospital towards the Rafa crossing. And perhaps most damningly, we've just been hearing uh, Jessica from the Red Cross who confirmed that they had been given uh, information about this particular convoy that was due to leave uh, the Shifa hospital on its way uh, to the Rafa crossing. What we know about the attack is that there are uh, several uh, casualties, uh, many wounded uh, as well, uh, and that uh, this does appear now to have been a convoy of wounded Palestinians being taken to the Rafa crossing that was, uh, that was hit as part of that IDF strike, now claimed uh, by the IDF again uh, with the idea uh, that this was part of their operation uh, to take on uh, Hamas. The evidence that we're getting uh, from uh, those sources, not just inside the Al Shifa hospital, but again, from the Red Cross does seem to contradict that. So the evidence from the medics and the Red Cross contradicts Israeli claims. And I don't know about you, but I think I'll stick with the Red Cross and the medics. Now, even if there was a Hamas operative, it would never justify bombing a convoy of ambulances. You see, the Israeli state is so emboldened, so emboldened, by the support they're being provided by Western states as they commit a massacre. A massacre, which is currently taking place, of biblical proportions, as I've said, that they're just going and declaring, we're committing war crimes, everyone, just so you know, we're committing war crimes. It isn't subtle, to say the least. Now, Starman knows that approaching 4,000 Palestinian children in Gaza have now been slaughtered. That's more than the total number of all people of all ages who were killed in the Northern Ireland Troubles over the course of three decades. Now, he knows there's a humanitarian catastrophe caused by the lack of clean water and food and fuel and electricity and health service. The health service is in collapse. He is a lawyer and he does know that collective punishment of civilians and the indiscriminate slaughter of civilians are grave war crimes. He knows too that Israeli politicians and officials, he knows what they're saying. The subtlety is not their forte. Uh, he knows about the genocidal biblical references from Netanyahu calling for the killing of all men, women and children, uh, or the various calls for Gaza to be reduced to a city of tents, uh, or as the defence minister put it, we will eliminate everything. We could go on. And what Starmer has done is support an Israeli onslaught which underpins these crimes against Humanity. Now, he knows that his position means there's no pressure on our Conservative government and they can continue to give carte blanche to Israel to behave just how it likes. That has now led to two Labour Council leaders to demand Keir Starmer resign. Two council leaders. That does not normally happen when you have an opposition leader this close to an election. To put it mildly, let's just listen. In a letter, the Burnley Council leader wrote, I joined the Labour Party because of the values of standing up and speaking out against injustices across the world. Sadly, Keir Starmer has not stood up for Labour values, hence why we are calling upon him to stand down. And the leader of Pendle Council added, unfortunately, he has failed to listen and we ask that he considers his position and resign to allow someone to lead our party who has compassion and speaks out against injustice and indiscriminate killings of human beings. Now, Keir Starmer's not going to resign. Fine, that's obvious. Thanks to a Conservative implosion, Labour has a whopping polling lead. 
None of that has anything to do with Keir Starmer, whose personal ratings plummeted by 12 points in the space of a week, according to Delta Poll, which I think I think can, we can largely attribute to him backing a campaign um, unleashed by Israel, which is slaughtering huge numbers of children and innocent civilians, which doesn't generally go well down well, actually, with, with, with huge numbers of people in this country. Who would have thought it? it the reason for the Tory implosion is Partygate, an unprecedented cost-of-living crisis, corruption, scandals, conservative civil war, the Liz Truss experiment, that enough was sufficient to finish off a normal government, the NHS collapsing, public services and infrastructure falling apart, Rishi Sunak being an embarrassing, shambolic waste of space. But he is achieving... Keir Starmer, what Tony Blair took years to accomplish when he was Prime Minister, um, not leader of the opposition, which was to become a hate figure amongst sections of his own electoral coalition. That's what's happening to Keir Starmer. He's exposed the fact, clearly he doesn't care about human rights. Anyone who now claims that is off their trolley. Uh, he doesn't care about human life. He doesn't care about international law. And that, therefore, he will do in power what Blair did, which is be at the beck and call of the United States in whatever horrors they decide to back or unleash. That's what gave us the calamities of Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, as Shabab Khan at ITV says, multiple Labour MPs I've spoken to are expressing frustration that they're essentially being told uh, that party policy in Gaza will simply uh, follow the White House. One usually supporter of Astama tells me it's a lack of leadership and will ultimately hurt us. Firstly, you're spineless. You should come out and actually do something, resign. Um, obviously, your careers are more important than the small matter of the mass slaughter of innocent children. Um, but this is what he is like and what he will be like in government, which is why anyone who thinks we're going to have a transformative government um, is, I think, delusional. I think we're going to end up with something a bit like Theresa May a uh, politician who has no clear political principle and will just be at the mercy of events. Um, um, it goes on to say, it's an interesting divide at the moment. Many Labour MPs um, publicly calling for a ceasefire, around a third, while many are doing so privately, but there's still plenty within the party who believe Starmer's position demonstrates he can be an international leader while they're off their trolley. He also says, blimey, a Labour MP reached out to say there was no point Starmer trying to convince people that humanitarian pauses are the answer when he will literally be arguing for a new position as soon as Biden and Starmer uh, Sunak announced one. Well, indeed. Now, Starmer refused to condemn war crimes on the basis politicians shouldn't be doing running commentaries. Well, let's just expose that as a nonsense based on his own previous statements. As to whether each and every act is in accordance with the law, well, that will have to be adjudicated in due course. Um, I think it's unwise for politicians to stand on stages like this or to sit in television studios and pronounce day by day which acts may or may not be in accordance with international law. I think it's not the role of politicians. Is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? Yes. yes. What I've seen already amounts to war crimes, uh, particularly uh, the awful attacks on civilians. Absolutely brazen the state of this honestly the absolute state of this now there is a labor revolt labor councillors across the country have been demanding a ceasefire 25 uh, labor groups council groups have demanded a ceasefire just according to a poll a third of labor councillors just a third say they're satisfied with the leadership position on israel and palestine and just to be clear now just say what i actually think that's my job um in terms of because various councillors have been leaving the labor party that third of labor councillors who say they're satisfied with the leadership position on israel palestine they're the people who should be leaving the labor party they're the people they they're the ones who are supportive of war crimes and they're morally no different to the you know to assad um in terms of sorry supporters and cheerleaders of assad in syria What's the distinction here? Well, when people quite correctly, myself included, condemned Assad for barrel bombing, carpet bombing civilian areas, I thought the point of that was we oppose the indiscriminate murder of civilians. Not, oh, we only do that when it's a Western foe. And people go, we didn't march against Assad. Well, yeah, we weren't arming and supporting Assad, were we? That was the whole point. I mean, and, and actually, the, these scenes we're seeing from Israel, if they were being, those atrocities committed by a state opposed to the West, then these people would be demanding we go to war with them. That's what would be happening. It is a bleak low moment. In case I'm, of course, he should resign. He should complete. I mean, the guy is abject. You know, his whole leadership campaign, a travesty. He won't resign. What he will be is someone who wins by default and then a terrible prime minister. That's my prediction. We'll see if I'm wrong. Let's see how he's doing after two years in power and how popular he is. And, 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 and how much, given him, there's no enthusiasm for him now, uh, and the fact he's already alienated large sections of Labour's natural supporters before he's even in power. Not going to end well. Um, so I would say to Keir Starmer's supporters, 
and his aides enjoy the way up because you're not going to enjoy the way down. Please like and subscribe. Do support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.